Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King and today I'm going to be giving you part 28 of what if Naruto was sent to the Marvel world. Remember to get this one to 200 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto was from the two greatest clans and enjoy that guys. And go ahead and check out the new episode over on Anime King of what if Naruto is a deceitful god and enjoy it as well. And later on I'm going to be posting a new episode of what if Aizuna Uchiha was Naruto ancestor. So stay in tune for that and I hope you guys do enjoy. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Anime King and Anime King 2. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, let's begin this new episode. Start the intro. <laughs> so, the last spot we left off, Naruto was still fighting Hela, as the both of them had a terrible battle. The battle was intense and epic, as everything Naruto threw at her, she would tank it and she even had natural energy. As the both of them were trying their best to knock down each other, as she wanted the key in his palm to open the gate and get the hell out of this place. As the both of them battled, tearing through the terrain and everything, as Nerta hit Hello with a big blast. But she came out as she was healing, as she revived Valkyries and as Guardian, but Nerta slaughtered all of them, sending them back to their resting place. As Hella recovered from Nerta throwing her with magnet release into the center of the ground. As the both of them started to go at it again, until Hella went all out as she hit Naruto with multiple attacks, as Naruto was bleeding badly. But when she was about to try and finish him off, Naruto raised up his head as he had his cosmic sage mode activated. With his cosmic sage mode, he started to beat the living crap out of her. As she couldn't believe it, someone was besting her this greatly. As she couldn't keep up anymore, as she was getting slower. Wait, he was getting faster. Naruto cosmic sage mode then ran out. But she still couldn't get the upper her hand because her body was exhausted. As he reactivated after, letting his clone absorb the energy. As Naruto created a larger Rasengan with 9 other Rasengan spinning around it as he smashed it into Hela. That was the last thing she saw before she woke up. As her body had fully healed and Naruto was sitting there. He was eating a cup of ramen. As Naruto asked her if she wanted the rest. She looked at him strangely as she wondered why didn't he finish it off. But he told her he wanted to hear her story. As she took the ramen and told him it. That Odin had a son before even Thor. But she started to have visions of the purple light that was around his son. As she started to see that purple light incinerating Asgard. So she slaughtered the boy by choking the life out of him. That is why Odin banished her to this place. But she realized now if she go back the people wouldn't see her as her hero. The people would see her as a woman that killed the defenseless child. Knowing that she can't beat Naruto she just wait for death. But Naruto told her that he doesn't see the reason for her to die after hearing her story. She thinks that she was doing right by protecting her place. But she know now that he can beat her so she won't try again as Naruto walked away as she was shocked that he didn't try to kill her. When Naruto emerged it was a month, a month had gone by as Odin asked him what happened to Hela. But Naruto told him that he didn't kill her as Odin still told him the location of the stone as Naruto was surprised by that. Thor then arrived as Thor was happy to see Naruto. A lot of things has been happening as Tony Stark did something as Naruto was beyond pissed when he found out what Tony did using the stone to create this thing called Ultron. And now Pietro and Wanda was working for it. As Tony was at Clint's house seeing that banner went on a rampage after Wanda went into his mind. As he was there just outside with Nick Fury. As Naruto was coming as he started the fret. As he saw Naruto at the entrance as Nick just told him just admit what he did wrong because he shouldn't be getting on Naruto's bad side now after he did such a foolishness. So yeah guys that was basically last part we left off. You guys can switch across the page and check it out for yourself. So, what do you say we begin this new episode? 
So Naruto said, tell me what happened. As Tony Sai, when your clone popped, Bruce and I decided to proceed without you for the rest of the week. At first we tried to follow through with the deal, but when the week came to an end, we made more progress with Ultron. He was conscious, he was aware. I had never seen anything like it, not with Jarvis, not with Friday, none of the AIs that I have created was alive like Ultron was. And he was compliant, he understood his objective and took to it like a duck to water. He was advancing so Bruce and I decided to step off his field test by sending to Sokovia to control the riots that broke out in the city streets. But something changed after that. He kept on asking me to build him a body, a perfect body. He said that he couldn't complete his mission without that. He said that intelligence was enough. I told him I would eventually but now we need to focus on working on the Iron Legion. Couple days later he fled to the Iron Legion, stealing the Mind Stone and Loki Scepter. He disabled Jarvis, programming, and that gave him plenty of time to do what he needed to do. A couple days later we figured that he was going to Africa to buy some black market vibranium. We confronted him but he recruited his enhanced Sokovia kids to help him out. One kid was as fast as bullet and the other one was some kind of witch and she set off Bruce. He hulked out and went on a rampage. I managed to stop him with Veronica, but the damage was already done. Naruto tapped his forehead. He realized this wouldn't have happened if he just done what we agreed, right? There's a chance, Tony said. I should have known better than to give you guys a stone. Tinkering with these things is a bad idea in general. Nothing good could have come of it. To be fair, the Tessera could have provided us with a method to unlock. Unlimited energy, Tony said. And open a door to massive destruction, Nurta said. These things are double-edged swords, Tony. Whatever good you get out of it, endless energy, world peace, whatever. It's just as likely to give you countless misery and endless life loss. Tony got up from the stool that defeated Grunt. Well, kid, what now? Now you help me find Ultron so we can end this. Then I get that stone away from you as far as possible. As Nurta then turned, he then stopped at the door. After that, I think we can say on absolute certainty that we're done. You do you, I'll do me. But we're not on the same side anymore. If I find out you do something like this again, well, I have my own team now. Get it, Naruto said. Yeah, I got it, Tony said. As Naruto walked out, ran the hand through his hair. As he tried to calm himself, he then forced a smile as Lila ran over to him as he jumped straight into his arms. He laughed as he caught her as he gave her a quick twirl. As he set her down, he asked, where's your old man? Daddy is inside with Auntie Nat and Mr. Banner, said Lila. As Naruto walked forward as Steve came from around the corner with a glass of lemonade and an axe in his hand as it was over his shoulder. Naruto, you're back. Yeah, I'm back, Naruto said. As he looked the man over, how are you feeling, he asked. Better, just need to clear my head. As he looked around the property, pretty easy to do here, seeing how peaceful this place is. As Naruto nodded, allowing Steve to catch up to him, you ever think about finding a place like this? To lay low. All the time. As the door opened again as Natasha came out. As she looked Naruto over, as she then stepped aside to let two men walk past her. But then she grabbed his hand. Can we talk? She asked in a soft tone. As Naruto looked at her, as she looked very upset, as he could see it on her face. As Naruto walked in, as he gave greetings to Clint and Cooper, as they were sitting at the table. As Clint looked Naruto over, you look like shit kid, he said. As Naruto looked down to realize he hadn't changed out of his clothes with his fight with Hela. His shirt was still missing though he put on his ruined jacket and his pants looked like they went through a butcher shop. I've had an interesting day, or month if I must say, he said. Yeah, you're going to have to explain it a bit more better than that Laura called out from the kitchen. As she walked into the living room as she handed him a glass of lemonade, you vanish. You, your clones, you are gone. Thor said something about the quest but he didn't go into any details. She explained giving Thor a pointed look. As Nerd took a sip of the lemonade, if Thor didn't give any details then all I could say is that I went on a super dangerous dimensional planet where it moved at a different rate of speed from Earth. To me it was a day but here it was a month. The room was silent until Cooper spoke. Cool. Well Clint got some hand me down from his college days he can spare for you. Come on I'll show you said Laura as she led Naruto. As they found themselves in one of the bedrooms, she pulled out a pair of jeans. Here, see if they fit, she said as she threw it over to him. As Naruto raised the eyebrow, if you're really that embarrassed, I'll turn around, she said. 
as near to scoff as he dropped his pants as Laura was digging through the box. As she pulled out a white t-shirt. How bad do you think it's gonna be she asked. Near to put on his shirt. I don't know. But I'm gonna call my team and see if they can give some backup. Do you really think it's gonna be that bad she asked very concerned. Maybe it's hard to say with these kinds of things. I mean look how bad things got. Now this robot Ultron. Has enough material to make whatever he's planning. He could cause a lot of damage before he stop him he said. As Laura just looked at him. This is, this is really scary stuff she said. If you're worried about, of course I'm worried she said cutting her to off. As she breathed out, I've been with him ever since we were 17 Naruto. That idiot signed up for the marines right out of high school. And I was worried for him then. I was worried for the other wars. And also every mission that he took with shield. Every fight with the Avengers, I am always worried. But I know he can handle himself. And you don't have to tell me that you will protect him. I know you and everyone else downstairs will do what you can to keep him safe. But something about this seems different. As Nerta simply rests his hand on her shoulder to comfort her. As she then gave him the jacket. I think I'm gonna start dinner she said. As she went outside. Walking past someone as Nerta could see by her reaction. As Natasha then came right at the doorway. Hey she said softly. Her arms folded under her breast. As she came in. Hey Nerta said. As she closed the door behind her. I don't know if they told you but we had a couple rough days. Yeah, Thor and Tony said something about it, Nerka said. As he sat down, she sat down on the bed as well, a arm distance away. So, what happened, he asked. We went after Ultron, but there was this girl with him. She used her powers to get in our heads. Steve, Thor, Bruce, me. She made us see things. She made us feel things. What did you see, Nerka said. I saw a lot of things, she said. The Red Room. My training, the things they made me do, the things they did to me. And I saw you, she said. Me, Nerta said. I saw us, but it was in the past. I don't really know when it was. But you were there. You kept trying to walk towards me, but some reason, I kept running away from you. I wanted to stop, but I couldn't. And eventually, you stopped trying. After a while, I couldn't see you anymore. What are you trying to say, Natasha? Nerta asked as she stopped. She turned to him fully as she released a sigh. After all of this is over, I think I'm leaving. What? Nerd said shock. Leaving? Where? I don't know, she said. Bruce said he was going to leave after everything was taken care of. After what happened, he does think it's a good idea for him to stick around anymore. He thinks he's caused too much damage. And I can't help but think the same thing about myself. As Nerd processed that for a moment, so the two of you are running off together. Are you two? No, she said, cutting him off. Well, not now. Maybe. Eventually, she said. I don't know to be honest. And what? You're asking my permission not to ask. No, it's not that. I just want to tell you if I do, she said. Naruto got up as he looked down at her. The Natasha I knew, don't run away from her problems. She'd face them or die trying. If you want to retire and move away with Banner to some tropical paradise, you have my blessing. But don't use me or Banner or Wanda as an excuse to run away. Don't be a coward Natasha, you never were. With that he walked out of the room, closing the door behind him. Time skip. Lila ran up to Naruto as she showed him a picture. As Naruto took it and smiled as he realized it was the family. As the right hand side Naruto recognized himself in the picture. Who else had such awesome whisker marks? Lila stood between them and the woman he quickly realized was Natasha. All six of them were holding hands and smiling. That's an awesome drawing Lila Naruto said sincerely. As Nerta smiled at her, she then took the picture and ran off to show Natasha. So, Bruce said as he watched. Natasha smiled at the picture. Did you and um, 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 as he stuttered. You're gonna have to form an actual sentence, Nerta said. As he looked over the room, Steve was leaning against the entrance. As Clint was standing next to the resting Laura, Thor was observing some of the pictures. And Stark was throwing darts. And Natasha was sitting next to him and Bruce in the dining room. As Bruce then spoke again, well, you know, you and she still has, yeah, I know she does, Nerta said. As he eyed Natasha, she pinched Lila's cheek. As Nerta turned towards Bruce, do you have feet? But Nick then spoke. As he was at the sink cleaning the dishes, Ultron took you folks out of the place so he can buy himself some time. All of my contacts say that he's building something. With the amount of vibranium he made off with, it's not one thing. 
What about Ultron himself? Asked Steve. Oh, he's easy to track, said Fury. He's everywhere New York, London, Sokovia, Washington, DC, Los Angeles. The guy's multiplying faster than a rabbit. He still doesn't get us any handling his plans, though. Still going after launch codes, Tony asks. Yes, he is, Fury says. He walked to the table as he wiped down a chopping knife, but he's not making any headway. As Tony looked over, I cracked the Pentagon. Firewall in high school on a deer. Well, I contacted our contacts at Nexus about that, Fury said. Nexus, Steve said. As Bruce was want to answer, it's a world internet hub. Every bit of data flows through there. It's the fastest access on Earth. So what did they say, Clint asked on the living room. He's fixated on the codes, but they're constantly being changed, said Fury. Changed by who? Asked Tony. Party unknown, said Fury. So we have an ally, Natasha asks. Ultron got an enemy, Fury said. That's not the same thing. We need to find the unknown, said Tony. Do you really think we should be splitting our focus? Ultron is a thing we should be looking for, not who is on our side, said Naruto. I agree, Steve said. We can find them after we deal with Ultron. We still don't know what he wants to accomplish. He said he wants a body to complete his mission. But what mission is that exactly? Don't you remember what he said before he left, Tony said. Extinction. That is his goal. He wants a body that can give it to him. I imagine getting a hold of the nuclear codes. It's just so they cannot use them against him. He's building a new body. He's fixating on building the perfect human form. Why? Steve said. I don't know. Biologically speaking, the human's form is outdated. But he keep coming back to it. Tony said. As Natasha spoke, when you two created him to protect human race, you amazingly fail. As Bruce looked down. They don't need to be protected. They need to evolve. As he looked at the group, Ultron is going to evolve. How Fury acts. Has any of you been in contact with Helen Cho? He asks. Time skip. Location, South Korea. It's beautiful, Dr. Helen Cho said, as her eyes was dull blue, as she was under the control of the Mind Stone, as she saw Ultron, body, his body vision, as it was beautiful, she said. Its form was light but firm, the skin a reddish purple, green lights ran over the nude form. Looking down at his vision, Ultron nodded. Mechanical man was tall, over 7 feet, his mechanical body thin and lanky. As his red eyes scan over his new body. Touch, smell, taste, sight, sound. This body, my vision, will soon have all of these. It will be the next step in evolution. Perfect in every way. So yes, it's truly beautiful, Ultron said. The vibranium is melting with the body perfectly. Once the process is complete, it should be able to harness the power of the Mind Stone. Without overloading your programming, you will still be you, only... Only alive, Ultron finished her. Sentence. From behind them, one of Ultron's creation was there holding the Mind Stone as a laser drilled into the glowing rock. Cracking on the heat gem eventually shattered the reel, the yellow stone. Ultron took the stone as he looked at it carefully for a moment, as he then placed a the stone in a slot on Vision's forehead. And with this, my wish come true. What wish is that? He then turned to see Pietro and Wanda. As he looked towards Pietro to be alive, Wanda raised the eyebrow and she walked towards the body. Are you not alive already? She asked. I am sentient, I think he said. Therefore, I am. But I am not alive. Not really. I cannot comprehend thoughts, smells or tastes. When you speak, I understand you, but I am not hearing you. I cannot feel you the way you feel me. So you want to be human, Pietro said. When I was created, my main objective was... A programming called the Iron Legion to put a suit of armor around the world. My field test was for me to try and perform riot control, but my intervention only upped the violence. It was there I saw the depravity of human life, witness it for myself. These people are looting, destroying and killing in protest. I realized that humans are a paradox. I couldn't understand them, but I need them. I need to understand them. Therefore, I was a paradox too. I realized in order to enact my duties, I needed something that would allow me to understand why humans do what they do. I needed a body, a true body. I asked Tony Stark to give me one, but he brushed it off, saying that he would when I proved myself. But now, and with the Mind Stone I will transcend all form of thought. 
my thinking will exist in a different time plane and with this body I will be able to enact that will upon this world. So you basically want to become God, said Pietro. As old Chon just looked down at his body. So let me ask you, what will your first act as God be? I will bring the next genesis, old Chon said. Meanwhile, Naruto watched as Steve strapped his helmet in place as the team was ready to leave. As Steve was giving out orders, we need to keep civilians away from the fight, Naruto. I think the clearest bet is for you to fan out and clear away and teleport them to safety. Right, Naruto said. Where were you thinking I'd take them? Roger looked to Fury. You still have any heli characters laying around? Well, I was planning on letting that be a surprise, Nick said. But yeah, I just need to meet up with Hill and a few others. And I can get it running. I'll take you, Naruto says. He created that clone that grabbed onto Nick's shoulder. He will take you where you need to go, and he'll gather my team when he's heading there. You guys meet us as soul as soon as you can, Naruto said. Got it, Fury said, as the shadow clone and him blinked away in a flash. Naruto turned to Tony, I will get someone to look into the situation that you were talking about, Nexus. If we can somehow cut off Ultron's access to the internet, that will give us an advantage. Tony raised an eyebrow, who do you have that can outwork Ultron? Oh, I'll leave that for later, Naruto said, the knowing smirk. Standing away from the group, Laura watched as Clint strapped his bow on his back. He looked at his wife, I'm gonna finish, reflooring that sunroom as I get back, he said. She gave him a smile, yeah. Then you will find another part of the house to tear apart. No, he said. It's the last project, I promise. As Laura pulled him down into a kiss. Meanwhile, upstairs, Natasha zipped up her suit, making sure everything was in place. She then heard a voice behind her. So, last one, huh? Turning around, she saw Bruce at the doorway, as he was fibbling with his hands, as he debated whether or not to walk more into the room. Yeah, I guess, she said. You know, if you don't want to do it, Bruce said as he stepped in the room. I understand. It's not that I don't want to, but after my talk with Naruto, she said. Naruto, Bruce said, of course. She blinked. What about him? I just can't understand it. You want to get away from your past, from him. But one word from him and you want to stay? That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what I want, Natasha said. Everything just came flooding back to me. Everything I ever done was shoved back into my face like a bucket of ice water. Then you came along, talking about going away, and that was amazing. It sounded amazing, she said. To find some place where none of the things that I've done matter. A first slate, but I don't think running away from my problems will make them go away if I give in. I'm letting my problems control my life. If you run, your problems are controlling your life, she said. My problem does control my life, he said. I can't walk down the street anymore without worrying about my problem. I can't have anything anymore. My problem is a deciding factor. All I can do is run, and now, after what he did, what I did, I don't think it's a good idea for me to be around here anymore. Then maybe you shouldn't, she said. Bruce stood there frozen until he finally spoke. Then maybe I will. After all of this, he said. I'm sorry, Bruce, she said. No, no, I understand, he said, waving her off. Not everyone can drop anything and run like I can. I know that. Well, wherever you go, don't think that you cannot come back here. He smiled but his voice lacked all emotion. Yeah, thanks, he said. Time skip. He's here, said Ultron to Wanda. Who, she asked. Naruto Uzumaki. Pietro immediately recognized the name. Where, where is he? Is he inside the building? No, but the cameras have spotted him around. As he was looking at the body. He's been missing for a month now. I was hoped that he had been killed. But I suppose we can't get all we want. You want him dead? Wanda asks. As she felt something come from Ultron. You're afraid of him, she said. Ultron looked down and then looked back at the body. I don't feel. I just see him for what he is. And what is that, Pietro asks. Dangerous, Ultron said. Dr. Helen Cho then walked into the room. The cellular cohesion will take a few more hours, but we can initiate the consciousness stream. As she connected a thick cord to the back of Ultron neck with a thick click. As she started tap over at her computer. We're uploading your matrix now, she said. As the cradle came alive, with a lot of sound as Wanda fell out cry from the empty body. She walked towards it, I can read him. He's dreaming, she said. I wouldn't call them dreams, Ella said. It's Ultron, base consciousness, information. How soon, Ultron said, cutting her off. If Uzumaki Nurta's return, our time frame is less. As Wanda pressed her hand against the glass, ignoring the conversation going on between Helen and Ultron. 
as he was shot with information, a meteor striking the planet, killing everything around it. Nerd to killing Wolfgang with Loki's scepter, a violent riot in Sokovia. As they were trying their best to destroy the Iron Legion in Ultron control, the sight of these Sokovians killing each other. Images of human mentality and self-harm, of war, genocides and enslavement. And then of a man enveloped in fire, with grand powers he stood above it all, as he was pushing off fear, jealousy and hatred. She gasped as she removed herself from the cradle as she held her head. Ultron remained seated as Pietro went over to comfort his sister. Wanda then looked over you told us that we were going to end the Avengers, that we were going to kill Tony Stark, that we were going to make a better world. It will be a better world. With this body I can end that man that all of them call a god. I will evolve past him and shape the world in a better place like he should have done. And global extinction will make the world a better place Wanda said. As Pietro was shocked, Ultron nodded slowly as his consciousness started to fade in his new body, his vision. Humans are like parasites, devouring away at everything. The universe sent this planet a cure in the form of Naruto Uzumaki, but all he turned out to be was an enabler. He has the power to vaccinate this world but he doesn't. It should only be fate that he be the catalyst for my creation. For the creation of a new god, he said. Is that what you think you are? A god said Pietro, as Ultron then raised his hand. A quick beam of light extended from his finger, piercing right through Pietro's stomach. Pietro said one that she catch her brother as she put pressure on the wound. Did you not see that coming? Ultron said. As Helen spoke, the completion, nearly three-fourths of the way done. As Ultron spoke again, you should have not pushed me, Pietro. The only reason I've allowed you to live this long is because of your sister. Sadly, it seems the only thing that can outrun your feet is your mouth. Tears poured from her eyes as she watched Pietro's face turn into a deadly white. All the color drained away as she turned towards Helen. Help him! But Helen didn't even take her eyes off the screen. I said help him, she said as her eyes turned a dangerous red. Helen then stumbled as she clutched her head. Seeing Pietro lying in a pool of his own blood, she gasped as she rushed over. What happened? Just take care of him, Wanda said. As she broke the control that Ultron had over her, Helen, she then looked towards Ultron. How could you? How could I what he said? Don't toy with me, she said as her hands was enveloping her scarlet energy. He tilted his head. Did you really think I care for you? You were pawns. You wanted Tony Stark dead. I wanted everything dead. Our two goals overlap, so I used you as best as I could. Don't act like you weren't using me to get what you wanted. Once Tony Stark was dead, you would have had no reason to continue our relationship. You would have left me and I would have had to kill you in return. All of Ultron's creation took several steps towards Wanda. Their hands bubbling with deadly energy. Don't take it personally, said Ultron. As the first one rushed towards her, Wanda grabbed him with her energy as she started to crush him. As the second one took advantage of that as he backhanded her away. As she smashed in the wall, she picked up herself quickly. But before she could do anything, a sentry crashed into her, breaking her through the wall. She gasped in pain as it pinned her against the wall. She quickly summoned a tentacle of energy as it wrapped around its neck. As she pulled the thing off of her, as she squeezed hard enough to decapitate it. As she wiped the blood away from her lip, as she glared at a hole that they put in her body. As she looked to see the two others over there, as they were glaring at her with their red eyes. As she was about to fight them, she was grabbed. As she was running out of the building, as she came to a stop outside with the person collapsing over her. As she turned to see Pietro lying on the ground, as he was clutching his stomach with more blood leaking from his wound. Pietro, why did you do that? She said. You can't move around, you're just gonna hurt yourself. You need to get out of here, he gasped out. He's going to kill you. Leave. No, not without you, she said. He grabbed her hand tightly. I'm done, Wanda. I'm done, he said. Wanda couldn't muster the words that she could say. As she only gripped her brother's hand. As he chuckled, maybe what you said that Blondie told you was right. Maybe we should have just left it alone. As Wanda watched as his breathing grew shallow, his eyes becoming unfocused as he looked up in the sky. I always wanted to go see the world, he said. To see the ocean, you know. I always wanted to run on water. But now. As his hand then went limp. As he went silent, 
As Wanda could only hold his hand, tears spilling out. Meanwhile, Ultron looked down at his body. Damn girl, you were supposed to be there when Uzumaki showed himself to me. Now I'll need something else to distract them. Before the Highlander Protocol. Highlander Protocol? Said Helen. As all of his creations turned towards her. I can't kill anyone in the building. It will send in a hero to save them, Ultron said. But I need them quiet. Her especially. Helen took a step back. As all of the creations stepped towards her. Everyone else in the city is free game, he said. Meanwhile outside Wanda, her hand still rests on her brother's body. She felt a hand on her shoulder as she jumped. As she swung her fist around to punch whoever touched her. But someone grabbed her wrist. As she turned to see Naruto looking at her. As Naruto sighed as he went down beside her. He placed his hand on Pietro's chest. I found the twins. The brother is... His name is Pietro, Wanda said. As Naruto changed his sentence. Pietro. He's dead. I have the sister now. Copy that, said Steve. I'm a block over and on my way. Tony. Should be here any second and Bruce and Natasha are coming in the Queen Jet. Clint has made his nest a few buildings away. We should be ready for an ambush in 5 minutes, 10 tops. Got it, Nerka said as he looked toward his side, as Thor was beside him. Thor and I are right in front of the building. We're heading in, Nerka said. Copy, Nerka got from all of the Avengers as he then turned towards Wanda. I'll make a clone to take you and your brother away. Just tell us what floor the robot is on. Top floor, research and development lab, she said. Two shadow clones popped in existence as one of them picked up Pietro, while the other one went to grab Wanda, but she brushed it off. I am not leaving, she said. Nerta sighed, fine, but my clone, stay with you. Fine, she said. As Nerta started to draw in natural chakra, the sound of screaming broke out around them as Ultron sentients started to wreak havoc on the city. The hundreds upon hundreds of sentries started to open fire on the city. What the hell Nerta said, as several dozen sentries flew out of the building, going for any nearby civilians with murderous intent. Guys, we got a problem. He's got a bunch of robots or drones. They're attacking the city, Nerta said. Hawkeye, who was pouch on a skyscraper a few blocks away, he fired off an arrow as it tear right through the eye socket of one of the sentries. As it died instantly. We're seeing it, he said. Avengers, time to work for a living, Tony said. Steve then spoke, Naruto evacuate as many people as you can now. I'm already on top of it Naruto says he created several more hundred shadow clones as all of them spread out wide to try and save as many civilians as possible. Fury, what's your status? ETA, 15 minutes Fury said. Meanwhile Thor who was swinging his hammer as he brought the lightning incinerated a few of them. Banner get out here now, we need the beast. Yeah, I don't think that's the best idea Banner said as he was in the Queen Jet. I am not exactly sure. Bruce. Come on buddy, I know you are still a little hassle from what happened back then. But we need you to go cold green. Like right now actually. Tony said as he flew through the city and blasted any of the sentries that got too close. As Bruce stood on the Queen Jet. As the door opened. As he turned as he saw Natasha activate. Autopilot. What are you doing he asked. Just came up to say I am sorry, she said. You don't have to keep apologizing, he said. Not for that, she said. For this. As she pushed him out. Sorry, she shouted. Hawkeye chuckled as he fired a few more arrows. He's gonna be pissed, you know that, right? Yeah, kind of the point, she said, as she went to get control of the Quinjet again. I'll see you boys in a minute, she said. Naruto was running down the street as he smashed and teared the sentients to pieces. But they were on a war path. They were trying to exterminate all of the civilians. They barely paid him any attention. They were focused on killing as many people as they could. And they were succeeding. People were running like a mad rush. Making it like shooting a fish in a barrel. As Naruto started to zip to each of them. As he was tearing them to pieces. But everyone he destroyed it seemed like two more take their place. Tony then spoke. These things are not letting us evacuate. They're picking off anyone they can get their hands on. Casualties have reached up into the hundreds. Friday spoke. Tony. New AI. Emergency service has been called, but they're meeting resistance. Thor, go out and assist as many paramedics as you can. Clear the road, Captain America said as he ripped apart the sentient with his beer hand. As Natasha landed the Queen Jeshi side as she saw a bunch of them as they head in towards the police station. They're cornering the police. Tony, you think you and Widow can handle that? Ask Cap. On it, Tony said. Just give me a sec. 
I'm going in said Natasha as she pulled her guns and dashed inside. Watching the police try to fend off the drones. Suddenly a roar broke out as a massive something landed in the middle of the centuries. Growl in the hall, grabbed a hold of three of them as he smashed them with his hands. The police watched on as he watched him rip out the last one head with his teeth. He spotted Natasha as he turned to give her a glare. As she gave him a nervous wave, hey big guy she said. He scoffed as he turned away from her as he jumped off into more fighting. With Ultra in his consciousness almost completely, in the new body, he caressed the container. There was a ding as the lightning's eyes shut off as his body collapsed down as the room went silent and with a whoosh the doors of the cradle unlock he gasped like he was underwater as he opened his new eyes to the world as he sit upright as he took a deep breath in and out slowly he ran his fingers over his skin feeling the artificial pores his fingers feeling every single thing his ears pick up the sound of war and bloodshed all around sending shivers down his body he could smell the blood in the ear that made his nose cringle as he chuckled to himself I am alive and as he chuckled to himself a chorus came from the drones outside they can only be one meanwhile Wanda panted as she ran with the nurture clone taking out as many of them as possible turning a corner she gasped as he pushed her up against the wall as there was an explosion from the building across the street as she looked at him do you think you can lift that rubble? what she said as the ring in her ear started to fade I'll cover you, you lift up the rubble from the building. I can feel a group of people trapped inside. We need to get them out and bring them to the helicarrier. He said as he released her. What helicarrier? She asked. That one, he says, he pointed behind him as she saw the giant thing hovering over the city limits. My team and some people fury recruited are keeping it safe. We can evacuate all the people in there, Nurta said. She nodded as the blonde destroyed every single of the drones that was in their way as she got a clear path as she enveloped the rubble with a crimson energy her face crumbling up from the strain she started to lift up everything as she went toward Nerd and several other clones crush all of the drones around using their magnet release to crush their bodies the sound of yelling of joy could be heard as Nerd uses earth style grade 2 stone pillars as he created a makeshift doorway sweat started to build across her brow as she watched the clones remove the people as the last of them exit he gave her a thumbs up as she released it as it fell back down as one of the clones grabbed several of the civilians as he gave them a quick warning before flashing away as the civilians blinked they were on this giant thing as they were carried off by several paramedics the one who were injured as Naruto saw Rode in his war machine armor flying overhead killing several of the drones when they got too close he then heard a voice as he turned as he was pulled into a hulk by Ileana. She then shoved him back. Where the hell were you? She said. The boss will explain later, he said. Did all of you get to come along? And where the hell did you get that suit? You like it? Quartermaster designed it when you were gone. As she motioned towards her new suit. As it covered her body completely, the color scheme with black and gold. She had on a red belt. The belt buckle designed to look like a symbol. For Infinity, Spider Woman is here, she said. As she listed off those names, Nurta quickly figured out who was who. Shuri was a quartermaster. Jessica Drew was Spider Woman. Here she says she reached into her belt pouch and pulled out a small black dot. Put this behind her ear. As he did, he heard, This is quartermaster. Do you read me? Yeah, I read you, quartermaster, Nurta said. Baba thought it would be best for me to have a code name. Shuri said. So, what's the play, boss? Right, Nurta said. Magic, Spider Woman, you're with me. As Jessica came from one of the tents, what do you want to do, she asked. As she was wearing a suit similar to Ileana's, but her was more deep red with black. On her torso was a yellow, widow element around it. Please tell me you're not going to wear anything like this, Krama said. What? Me? No, never, Shadclone said. Krama scoffed. You gave that girl some designs while I was asleep, didn't you? Instead of answering Krama, he looked towards Jessica. We need to fight off as many of these robots as we can and save as many people as we can. Leave the fighting of Ultron towards the boss. The boat of the nod as he placed a hand on his shoulder as he flashed away. Back on the ground, Nurture Cyclone and Wanda were running through the streets. As she was behind him, where to now, she asked. He pointed up to a skyscraper. Hawkeye went up to that building several minutes ago and we haven't heard from him since. We're gonna help him out, she said. Yeah, she said. As Nurt looked at her over his shoulder. Do you want to take a break? 
You can take us- No, all of this is my fault, she said. I am not stopping until all of this is fixed. It's not your fault, not all of it, he said. A lot of this falls on me too. Then maybe we should just shut up and fix our mess, then, she said. Hmm, alright then, he said. As they finally arrived to the building, as Wonder then held down to his shirt, stopping him. As Nurt was called out to Clint, but he couldn't hear anything on the earpiece. As he looked towards the girl, she was pointing at one of the sentients. As they were standing there, but their eyes were yellow, instead of red. Meanwhile, the real Naruto was fighting off a bunch of Ultron sentients. As he saw, their eyes went yellow, and their body limped over, like they got deactivated. As Naruto did not want to look a gift horse in the mouth, he created another large group of clones and exit the people out of here. Meanwhile, Tony, do you know anything about this cap axe? As all of the sentries shut down. Looks like he activated a fail safe similar to ones I have in my suit, but why would he? What? said Natasha, as she saw that Tony was at a loss for words. We need to get everyone away from here. Now, he said. Meanwhile, Hawkeye growled as one of the Ultron sentries swat him in the face that sent him flying back. As he fixed his footing and used his bow to slap it in the face, but it was sturdy. As this was the last sentries down here, the lucky survivors were hiding in the next office beside him. He had to take care of this thing. But his earpiece was damaged, cutting off any communication with the rest of the team. He then saw the sentry, arms went to his side, as his eyes went to a dull yellow. As he catch his breath, you can come out now, he said, as a few people peeked out, or you show one of the women acts. No, not really, he said. That's why you should hurry up and head to the roof. Someone will pick you up. As they were walking, they can only be one. As Clint turned towards the sentry, what? Activate the Highlander protocol. Clint looked towards them. Run! Boom, there was an explosion. As outside, the Naruto clone and Wanda watched as the building went up in flames that Clint was in. Wanda looked over as her hand covered her mouth as the explosion sending debris flying everywhere. As there was many explosions going on with people screaming out. With Nick Fury, all he could do was watch as many explosions went off. My god, he said. He quickly gathered himself. All available paramedics and disaster relief workers and any other personnel, we need to get down to the ground. All transporter units, we need to prep for takeoff ASAP. Meanwhile, Naruto coughed as a lot of dust got into his system, as blood was running down the side of his face, as he threw the rubble off him. When he looked around, he saw destruction, pure destruction, as Friday's voice came to his earpiece. Boss, estimated casualty are in the thousand. Every known Ultron centuries has detonated. The cities of London, Hong Kong, New York, Washington DC and Paris all report several explosions in key areas. Sokovia is reporting at least a hundred explosions. Here, however, has taken the heaviest hit. Meanwhile, Tony was cursing the bastard use. Myself, state protocol and kicked it up 10 notches, turned it into a Kazakami attack. Everyone report in, said Steve. As he was a large cut in his side, he blocked most of the damage though. Natasha, who taking cover behind Tony in the explosion, cough. Present, she said. I'm here, said Tony. I'm alive and well, said Thor. Hulk roared from several blocks away, answer. Steve question. Nerdy there, he said. Said Blonde was looking up at the building that Ultron was in. I'm fine. Clint, you there, buddy, said Tony. After waiting several seconds, Steve spoke. Tony, you think you can check the building that he was sweeping? On it, Tony said. But several blocks away a building was perfectly unharmed. Emerging from it was one man. He didn't look to be human though, his skin was a reddish purple. His body, wrapped in a tight body suit that was blue, in color with red. A golden cape flowing behind him. And the mind stone was on his forehead. People of soul, rejoice. You're the lucky few to see the first age of the new age of man. You're the first to see me, the new vision of mankind. Ultron, Thor battle cry could be heard from miles as he swing Milnir with all of his might. As Ultron held out his hand and caught the hammer, as he smiled, as a beam of yellow energy shot from his hand and smashed into Thor. As Ultron walked over, I wonder if I take this hammer for myself, will Asgard bow before me? Asgard will never bow before you, you monster, said Thor. Ultron sighed, ashamed, he said, as he then started to drive his fist into Thor's upper torso as he was 
pounding fist after fist as Thor starts to call for blood. A roar could be heard as Hulk thrust his fist, but Ultron body turned intangible as Hulk fist passed through it. Ultron body then returned back to normal as he jabbed his hand right into Hulk's throat. As Hulk took a step back, as Ultron fist glowed with energy as it smashed into Hulk's chest. Using the Mind Stone power, Hulk was sent flying back into the building behind him, breaking through it. Ultron then heard a voice. You killed him. Hello Maelstrom, Ultron said as Naruto was walking up to him. You have to be more specific. I killed a lot of people today. You killed him, Naruto said. Clint, Martin, you killed him. But guys, it'll be any this episode right here. If you want to the next part, if you don't know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn that bell notification stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in the social media platform. But for now, I'm out of here. See you guys soon. Peace.